HopelessRobot.com presents... You're listening to Animated Opinions, a podcast where I genuinely regret my life choices. I'm Melanie. I'm Emily. Today we have for you a question about morality, existential existence, uh, the goodness of man... Uh, just kidding, we have an Asylum animated film. It's, it's called Trollland or Trolls. It's not too late for that murder-suicide pact. It really, that's the first note in the doc, and it's the one that matters, because it's still not too late. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be a quick one, because there is nothing about this movie. Actually, you know what? We're doing this live, because it's going to be a short one. I am DB. We're going to look up Trolls. I feel like there was no trivia about this. And that's why there. this movie is cursed and everyone that worked on it maybe died or evaporated into ghosts. Oh, like hell if yeah. ghosts made this movie, I wouldn't be shocked. Sorry. One of the recommended movies is Joshua and the promised land, which is a 2003 TV movie. And it literally has the description, a creepy spirit kidnaps a boy and forces him to relive stories of the Bible. <laughs> I'm gonna it's like send imaginarium, it. yeah, but I'm gonna more send cursed? it to you, but like yeah, trivia. <laughs> Here we go. The only trivia on Trolls, aka Troll Land, is released on October 25th, 2016, to capitalize on Trolls 2016, which was released on the 4th of November 2016. This is referring to yeah. Trolls with an S at the end, which is the beloved DreamWorks movie. Trolls, a movie that, while not being a world beater in terms of story, was certainly charming and made me happy while I watched it. Can't stop the feeling. Yeah, well, you can't. Like, it turns out you can't stop made the me feeling. Smile. It turns out you can't stop the feeling because uh. we watched Troll Land, and I honestly got so I was watching this at work, and my coworkers <laughs> would like occasionally glance over to see what the hell was happening, and they're like what and i was like a, a character's arm just went through his own face like <laughs> holy shit i started abjectly screaming when i realized that jarvis had two sets of eyebrows and i never recovered oh jarvik jarvik my whose mistake. name i thought was like I, I couldn't even tell you what her actual name was here's joshua <laughs> you'll notice You'll notice that it took too long for me to figure out what Ja Rule's name was. It's Fen, but it took half the movie for me to know that. Oh, no. Yeah. This Joshua movie is not okay. No. So I guess the, the quickest summary we can give of Troll Land is a tribe of trolls prank humans at a nearby summer camp as part of their tradition. A boy at the camp meets one of the trolls and must protect the tribe from the camp leader, Olaf. That plot summary is incorrect. That is uh, the most... No, 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 no. They're not protecting... Oh, sorry. I... Uh, okay. I got Olaf mixed up with uh, Grandpappy Troll, Dick Van Dyke. Oh, Grandpappy, Grandpappy Troll who does exactly nothing. Yeah, wow. Dick Van Dyke Troll. Got it. Yeah, so yes. this whole I don't movie, know anyone's name. This whole movie looks broken. Um, it looks like it was a slap comp. So the characters slap comps are you just like you just shove everything together to see how it's gonna look, and then no adjustment yeah. was made. So there's no contact shadows. Characters just are floating over everything else, and the backgrounds look like they are just kind of out of the box, um, unreal. Is what we described, right? Do you think this one was done in Unreal Engine as well? It looked like it probably was, but I wanted to get your opinion on it. So with the motion capture, with the connect, I don't know if you can bring it directly in. I Oh, you can. You can? Then maybe. Yeah. Because there was Unreal no cleanup Engine 4 done. definitely can. So there was no oh fucking my point fuck. in like even opening it in Motion Builder. Because to have Motion Builder, you would probably need it from Autodesk. <laughs> You'd need another license. Yeah, you'd need one whole license. So the backgrounds look like they could be real because, you know, they weren't touched by the asylum. 
And the characters are just ugly. The characters are... None of them are coherent. No. The humans only get three body types. Boy, girl, Olaf. And the, the poster looks like it could have been... Like, it looked like they were trying to go for an animated live-action hybrid. They, it was a, basically a rip-off of a Smurfs yeah. movie poster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is what they were going for. The lip-syncing is terrible. Uh... Hayden is a terrible main character. The plot is terrible. Uh, it wastes. I let's not spoil. Let's not you know get too far ahead of ourselves. We still need right. to actually go through this movie. Mm-hmm. So trolls are assholes, and they got bored of being the best assholes in the animal kingdom. So they started pranking humans. Humans figured it out, and they were like, trolls, get the fuck out, you're pranking us. And so now there's one special week a year where the trolls prank humans called Prankapalooza to, like, remind humans that trolls exist or whatever. I don't fucking know. This was told in a storybook segment. But I thought and they it was all pranked them forever. Yes, but they, like, narrowed their pranking down from all the fucking time to one week a year. I didn't get that at all. I just thought it was like this one week a year. It was important. No, it's like they they keep the pranking to one week a year specifically so the humans don't get mad enough to exterminate them, which is why when Jarvik, Jarik, Jarvis, uh, basically Ja Rule is a troll and his sister Jarvik, who I think is also voiced by someone famous. Yeah. Is trying to. Uh, she's trying to be the best at the Prankapalooza competition to become prank queen. And she has the top spot on lock because she's savage. Ja Rule is worried that their pranks have gone too far and that humans are going to get super fucking pissed about it and exterminate all the trolls. Also, he thinks that maybe humans have regular values and love their families, but he's not sure. Meanwhile, Olaf, a southern Mr. Crocker, in essence, is obsessed with capturing the trolls. That's all the characterization you're going to get for Olaf, basically, so don't get excited about it. Yeah, he... We are instantly... Yeah. I I opened this movie, it opened up the storybook, and I was totally 100% ready to stare death in the face, whatever the consequences, because I, like I said, was watching this at work, and... The second something 3D animated came on screen, I had to pause the movie and sit down because it just like was not. I was sitting on the floor, by the way, because I had my desk as a standing desk. So my chair was pushed to the side. So I just sat on the floor for a minute and like contemplated my mortality and then stood up and then hit play again. And then my department lead walked over (laughs) to go over something with me like yeah there was like a quick director note fucking whatever who cares i mean i care uh it's hard to just i we've been drinking (laughs) we are drinking because this is the only way to express our pain basically my supervisor my fucking like whole department overall supervisor walked over and was just like hey do you have a second and i like minimized this like i was ashamed like it was like you were caught watching like a nudie pick by your parents or something. Uh, my supervisor saw me watching Howard Lovecraft and was like, are you watching that for your podcast? And I was just like, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it was 6 p.m. on a Friday and I was like killing time before I had to go out. Oh, so it wasn't fair. weird. No, yeah, we were both weird. sitting there eating our free dinner, like just fucking around. No, I actually think I would have felt less shame if I had been watching like actual porn. And someone came over and was just like, hey, do you have a second? I would have been like, yeah, hold on, let me pause this. Yeah. But, like, I didn't even pause it. I just minimized it. It was just like, oh, no, God. The best way I can describe the animation of Troll Land is that it looks like it was animated by a Snapchat filter. Yeah. It, like, Jesus take the wheel uh, for this whole goddamn movie. Like, I'm pretty sure there are Snapchat filters that have better mouth flap matching than Trollin does. I could do... these faces are fucking nightmares. I could do better blindfolded. 
Yeah. I, I, okay. So I took a drink of water because hydrate or dehydrate motherfuckers. It's summer in Los Angeles. And immediately a human face popped up on screen and I couldn't handle it. I just said, we see a human face. Oh Jesus. Oh God. And that was when I knew this was going to be bad because Olaf, this is the first human character we're introduced to. Olaf is like troll hunting and he sets up a trap for the trolls and his ass goes into his ankles. Like there is so much IP here. And that's basically so when when you've got a character in 3D space, they aren't solid at all. The yeah. illusion of, I mean, I'm assuming that people who listen to this podcast know how 3D animation works, but just to recap, they're all fucking <laughs> hollow on the inside. It's like if you were just skin, but your skin could Ooh. go through. So, like, when I cross my legs, my legs don't go through each other because I have, you know, fucking bones and shit. Meat. Yeah, I've got meat on me. But digitally, you kind of have to account for that, and that's why we have fucking character effects and why we have what I do. So like, if you have to catch it, like if somebody's shirt, somebody's skin is going through their shirt, I paint that shit out. Like it's fine, but they didn't do any of that for this. So Olaf's ass actually goes into his ankles and all I had, I tried to make a coherent note out of it and I failed that I had, I'm trying to set a trap for these trolls, but the clap of my ass keeps clipping through my lower legs. It's, I tried to be funny. That's the biggest move. I tried to <laughs> meme, but I couldn't because I was so horrified by this whole fucking movie. That's so perfect. Like, that's a good meme. Post that shit to Reddit. <laughs> but the clap of my ass keeps clipping through my lower legs. That's how you know you thick. I'm dummy thick. Oh, no. Damn straight. <laughs> I, d- I have so many feelings about this movie. The environments are pre-made, and it's so obvious. Because the trees will sometimes be bad, and sometimes they'll be good, and sometimes they'll be worse. Like, they were pulling trees from all over the internet, and none of them look the same. And uh, the trolls walk through a location and the skybox is a half dome and they like specifically pan through this wooded path that looks like it's a fucking PS3 game. Maybe. Yeah, I started. It's so awful. I started explaining because you said, what is this environment? And I started going off. I was like, these are, I think, pre-made assets because you know that they didn't fucking make this. And then I realized that there were no contact shadows and there was nothing. The characters are slap comped onto the environment layers. And I actually started like I took my headphones off and just stepped away and just had my hands over my face because I couldn't look at it like. I can't. It's hard to describe. Like without seeing it. So it's basically like you have a picture like a photograph and you slap a drawing over it. Yeah. But it doesn't look correct because they're, you know, so the lighting is entirely different for the assets and the character. Well, everything's an asset for the environment and the characters. So none of the lighting matches. And then you also have the fact that the characters are never interacting with the environment at all, at all. I would swear to fucking God that some of this is just pictures, like live action photographs of things. And that's why I asked the question. There's some locations that are very clearly just photographs. And I think that's true, but I would have to go through and like call them out. And I don't want to do call outs for this movie. That's not my job. No, I mean, no, this podcast Uh, is whatever we make it, but I'm not doing call outs for this. My note is just, am I going to die here? (laughs) I, yeah. <laughs> hey, why am I praying for death's sweet embrace here? I gotta take uh, a drink. I'll, okay. 
We can talk about the real movie now. Ja Rule voices a troll who looks little. Like, he's distinctly little and his voice doesn't fit at all. You would expect this troll to have, like, a child boy voice. Like, oh, gee willikers, I'm a troll. Wow, it's so great to do pranks. Or Justin Not Timberlake. Ja- Fair. But, like, Ja Rule's voice is, like, deep and manly, and it does not sound right coming from this tiny, like, three-inch lines. troll. It's like, it's like somebody, I don't know anything about Ja Rule, I am making no statements here. It's like somebody taught Ja Rule how to read while reading this script. Like, they were using this no, script like, as, like, an ABC book, and that was how his lines were delivered. No, it's Tell like me Ja Rule showed up... <sighs> These line reads are like, Ja Rule showed up hungover to traffic court with a pre-written <laughs> statement from his attorney trying to get out of a $500 parking ticket. And he's like, and I uh, I wouldn't do it again. Parking. Trolls are <laughs> like humans. He just doesn't Can give a friends, fuck. Hayden. I can't. I can't even do like a good. I can't emote less. <laughs> It's true. Ja Rule is not too much emotion to be a voice actor in Troll Land. Ja Rule could have read the phone book and would have been like, "This is a little dry." Yeah. Oh no, you're right. Uh, it's a very is so rough. It's all so rough. I have seen so bad. I've seen better animatics. From college students, like 3D rough layout bullshit. Like this movie looks like rough layout if rough layout was done by somebody who didn't know how to do rough layout. <laughs> is, what, is what I've concluded. Because like, you know, in, in layout you can have the placement of characters and it doesn't have to be pretty, but it still has to be generally what you're doing because that's what the animators are going to go off of. That's what lighting's going off of. That's what everybody's going off of. Layout is important. And it's like, they didn't fucking move past that. Like, his whose eyebrow was I even talking about here? I just have all caps. I just start all capping here. Eyebrow Geo is IPing through his own face. I think uh. that was Granddaddy Troll or Olaf. So these characters, some of the characters, like um, Jarvik, have eyebrows modeled on top of their eyebrows so there's like additional 3d geometry on top of her face because i don't think they knew how to like take the model that they had and blend shape it so her eyebrows she has eyebrows on top of eyebrows it was so good when I noticed. I was just like, oh no, she has two sets of eyebrows and one's moving and one isn't. Yeah, but somebody, I don't think it was her in this case because I was talking specifically about the eyebrow clipping through the character's own face. And then. I think it was one of the random children. Maybe. And then I just have a string of nonsense, all caps, the younglings, maniacal <laughs> laughter. I am screaming. <laughs> Why are they just kind of shaking? So in this scene, for some reason, Jarvik has decided that she's going to throw cookies out into the audience to make them like her yes. more. Because that that's not how Prank Queen is determined, Mm-mm. by the way. Don't understand. So the Maybe young they were are all voice acted as going, hooray, cookies, yay. And like you'd expect them to be like grabbing the cookies and looking cute. They're just like wiggling. Like their models not even are just they are twitching. It's like if you've ever watched something die and the final spasms that go through its body, that is what is happening here. Because they didn't, I, they they just mo capped. They were just like, how can we just have still motion capture? But when you're working with like not great mo cap systems, or you're not doing this kind of shit by hand, you've got a character sitting or standing there, but the the software is still picking it up as like kind of shaky. So these characters should just be standing still. And if you had a competent fucking crowds department, you would have like characters in the background and you wouldn't even notice them unless you're specifically looking at them because they act so naturally. But here they're just fucking twitching like they're dying. (laughs) I hate this. Also, did they threaten Dick Van Dyke with death if he didn't do this movie? They were like, yo, Dick, 
if you don't fucking partake in this movie, we're going to come to your house at night and smother you. Mm, I don't know. I feel like Dick Van Dyke may just not be aware enough to understand what he was this doing. This is elder abuse. They Dick Van Dyke was probably like, oh, they want me in the new Pixar movie. They want me in oh, the nice. Trolls movie? Okay. Oh, poor Dick Van Dyke. Also, I could have sworn he said Oswego when he, they were talking about, like, trolls of what Oswego Warren or whatever. There, there were lines in this movie, and I couldn't tell you any of them. I swear he said Oswego, and I was like, is this fucking goddamn upstate New York? Like, I cannot... This is when I started being unable to handle the movie. Five minutes in. Uh, what? Five whole minutes in. One of the trolls is just distinctly wearing like a BDSM harness. Yeah, Clorn. Dis- yeah, fucking Clorn. Fucking All right, Clorn. Clorn shows up again in the movie, but he doesn't do anything. He's just wearing BDSM gear cash. Yeah, I I didn't notice. We're circling back to the eyebrows. I didn't notice Jarvik's eyebrows until you called them out. And then I couldn't stop looking at them. And I just kept calling out the crowd animation. Unable (laughs) to understand fully what I was seeing. Uh, In the film, Olaf says, troll log, day 10,300 or whatever. And I'm like, wow, okay, according to Olaf's log, he's been trying to capture trolls for 30 years. And then he acknowledges it in dialogue. And I was like, oh, all right, I guess this guy is just real fucked up. Uh, And that's when I realized the voice acting feels like it's ripped from an okay movie. In theory, you could take the voice acting minus Ja Rule. Sorry, Ja Rule. And make something passable. Yeah, we could. You could definitely rip the audio from this movie and make a better movie. There is no doubt about that. Oh yeah, uh, here's so, where we yeah dip our toe into fucking plot, I guess. Uh, do you want to read this or should I? I'll read it because this is gonna get good. okay. Ja Rule troll Fen watches a new kid at camp, Hayden, being ruthlessly bullied. He reveals himself to Hayden in order to give his notebook back. They bond over their shared love of nature and meet up later in the night to go see some glowing mushrooms. I've been thinking about my life choices lately, (laughs) and I have to wonder who hurt me that this is the sort of thing I do to fill my time. Is that why you wanted me to read that? (laughs) Yeah, I was curious if you had already read read it. No. (laughs) I didn't see that. Oh, no. Oh, that's what happens when you leave me to write the plot summaries. I honestly could tell you exactly who hurt me that my life choices have led to this moment. Yeah. It's actually, it's a shorter list. So if I ever win an award, I was thinking about this while walking my dog because I have revenge fantasies. So as you do, I was walking my dog and all I could think about was how if I ever win like a prestigious award and everybody's like, I would like to thank the Academy I actually have a shorter list of people that it would be easier to call out their bullshit than it would be to think. So I'd be like, I would like to thank everyone except for these specific people and then go off. Damn, I like it, but also damn. Well, if I'm up there accepting an award, clearly I've done better than the rest of those motherfuckers. That's fucking fair. You deserve it. Um, once again, sorry, we had Ron Thornton directing this, and Glenn was a writer, and I was like, oh no, buddy. Buddy. Uh, The camera looks like it's drunk, because half the time the close-ups are poorly angled, or like the camera is moving unceremoniously. I don't know why they did that, because if you're doing... Okay, I... Now I'm thinking this through and I have an idea and you're just going to have to feel out, feel me out on this. Feel, let's help me feel this out. Okay. So when you are doing, when you're working with the connect, unless you have specifically written code to handle multiple connects, you've got your one and it is forward facing. That is your option. Okay. So you've got your mocap data. 
And if you are working in Unreal, Unreal and Unity, I get them mixed up all the damn time. And I'm really sorry to like the zero game devs that listen to this. Um, if you if you bring that mocap data, technically, it, excuse me, I've been drinking, is still in 3D space. You can manipulate your camera based on that. So I think they just kind of threw a camera in there and it looks all jerky and jittery because they're trying to base it off of the mocap data that they have. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't I, know. I don't yes. know what I just said. <laughs> yeah, I gathered it enough. Okay. I think that you're correct. Basically, My 3D answer. space, 3D space, 3D space. In essence, from the team that brought you Izzy's Way Home comes, we bought this grass because we didn't know how to render it. Izzy's Way Home looks better because it was actually animated by people instead of mo-capped to shit. Fuck hey, you, Andy Circus. Fuck you. Yeah. What, does he sparkle? Oh, oh, is this? Oh, did I call it out here? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes. Um, I couldn't tell if it was a texture choice or if it was just bad lighting or sorry, I was looking at something or if it was bad lighting or like what was going on, but the character's skin. Cause the other thing I thought I was like, Oh, they're trying to do that. Like nice dappled tree look like it's coming through the trees, you know? But then I realized that this is an asylum film and expecting them to be able to understand how light filtering through trees worked was far too generous of me. So I, sorry, sorry. You good. Um, I, I just, I don't, I don't know if it was the character sparkling. I don't know if it was them trying to have a well lit environment that was sparkly or, well, first of all, I just have to clarify, none of the environments are well lit, so I couldn't tell what was sparkling. I think it was the character. It It's all a fucking nightmare, yeah. and there's so many close-ups on these bad character faces, like the camera is nearsighted and is just all up in their face. Yeah, that's a decision that was fucking made. Holy shit. Like, if your characters there's don't no. look good, don't do goddamn close-ups. And if you're confident that There's your no characters shadows. look good, just goddamn fucking... This is why test audiences exist. Who has the money to have a test audience watch this fucking movie? Just pull in a kid. Somebody has to have a kid. Or have access to one. <laughs> Emily, that's child abuse. Fuck. There's no shadows. There's no lighting. It's like I took acid and my brain shat out a movie. There, everything was IPing everything else. The mouths just weren't rigged to move at all. Hayden's foot goes through his other foot. Basically, this whole movie, I was just watching characters collide with themselves. Also, this movie ends up kind of nudging at cell phone use yeah, being bad multiple times. I don't get it. What was even what happening? The fuck? Like, who was oh. this movie for? Who knows? Also, the voice of Jimmy Neutron voices a camp counselor in this, and it's so obvious that it's the same what woman who voiced oh, Jimmy Neutron. Miss Jessica. Miss Jessica. Miss but Jessica. it's just Jimmy Neutron. I didn't know it was Jimmy Neutron. But also... It bothered me. Also, all I know about Jimmy Neutron is that the team that brought us Jimmy Neutron also brought us our debut Barnyard. Yeah, they... That's okay. At this point, Barnyard is a distant memory and might as well be okay. Because compared to Troll Land, Barnyard is at least a coherent fucking okay. film. If I had only ever seen two movies in my life, one of them being Barnyard and one of them being Troll Land, Barnyard is a fucking 10 out of 10. Oh my god, right? Barnyard has stakes and character interaction and Kevin James. Barnyard actually had interesting character designs rather than horrifying, comparatively speaking. Yeah, like, compared to the... 
to this, Barnyard is a masterpiece. I honestly could not tell if this movie was a joke or if this was real because I was fucking beyond done with my life when uh, Jeruel and Hayden started doing shrooms, basically. Yeah. And I got, I was so mad. Okay, so there was an ad for Autism Speaks, which, by the way, guys, there are, like, yeah. so many better causes to donate to when you're supporting autism research, because uh, autism Oh, my speaks. God, literally anything. Basically, don't, <laughs> don't donate to Autism Speaks, because they don't, it's, it's not the best option if you're supporting... <laughs> autism research and stuff like that. Uh, but there was a stop motion ad for it that, which is why we're talking about autism speaks, um, that looked better than troll land. And I decided I would rather watch that ad for one and a half hours than ever watch troll land again. Like I would rather watch an ad for, uh, an organization that, you know, is kind of sketch than troll land itself. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I actually watched this with ads because I wasn't going to pay for well, it. Well, yeah, I watched it with ads too. Uh, each time an ad break came on, I was grateful because it meant that not only was something decent and well produced on the screen, oh, yeah. but also that I got a chance to stop paying attention to the movie. I got a chance to it's the not first look time. at troll land. It's not stop. It's the first attention. time I've ever been like, fuck yeah, commercials. Yeah. I I don't Oh yeah, you called out the night. I was like, why do I have only the note, holy goddamn Jesus fuck? Uh but you called out the night lighting. The night lighting. Yeah. What the fuck? The best thing in this movie, there's a scene where there are fireflies, and I swear to god the fireflies are just done in after effects with fade in, fade out. They're so good compared to the rest of this movie. It reminded me of the snowflakes and yeah. fucking abominable. Yeah. Which by the time this podcast comes out should be released. Okay. So it's in the trailer. Uh, I don't give a shit. It's fine. It's uh, really good. Then Everything decides to see, see Abominable. It's got a female main character, which is really important to the film industry right now, especially for color. children. Also, that yeah, I forgot. There's that, three like, main characters. And, All three of them are Asian. Fuck yeah! And the Yeti. Yes, it's all very good. Take your children to see a positive movie about a young girl of color. Yeah, and I don't Honestly, think there's just, any Coldplay songs in it. Yes. By the way, I A-plus. don't. I cannot speak to that one hundred percent, but I don't think there are any Coldplay songs in it. Not that there are any Coldplay songs in this. I don't know why I'm calling them out like that. I apologize. You are Coldplay. Yeah, you're really rude to Coldplay right I now. I actually enjoy uh, Coldplay. Wow. What? That's even worse. This is the final episode of this podcast, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna fucking fight each other and die. The best part is, I'm saying Coldplay, but the only thing in my head right now is an Ed Sheeran song that they used in the How to Train Your Dragon 3 trailer. Man, fuck Ed Sheeran. I would prefer not to. No. Sorry, Ed Sheeran. Uh, who definitely yeah, listens not, to Yeah, not podcast. for me. Um, Fen decides that he wants to take... We have to keep going. Fen decides... Yes, we do. He wants to take Aiden down to the troll hive, troll hollow, Warren, to prove that not all humans are bad. Jarvik is going to knock down the water tower during the summer camp jamboree. Uh, everyone is separated and nothing happens for a while to set up this ending. And then Jarvik turns Fen and Hayden against each other via being a lying sleuth. This is all accurate. This is just how I felt while I was watching it. So I'm, I'm gonna close kinda, enough. I'm going to kind of give like a better rundown of that because it gets a little complicated. Oh, fuck you. Well, no, it gets a if little If you wanted no, to no, give no, no, a no, summary, no, no, you no, no, give no, 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 it. No, 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 no. If we don't do this right now, the ending of the movie is going to be confusing. Eh, so fine. in the very, 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 very beginning of the movie, Jarvik is bragging about how she sank all of the camp's canoes. 
the whole reason that they are, oh, fuck, there's no good way to explain this. Um, Jarvik is going to drop the water tower for the camp and flood the whole place during the summer camp jamboree ending ceremony thing. However, that was supposed to happen down by the lake, but because she sank all the canoes uh, at the very beginning of the goddamn movie, they are now having the jamboree directly under the water tower. So this prank will kill people. So everybody is wrong. Jarvik is most wrong. She's about to do, like, manslaughtering. And... But she also does not approve of Jerule Troll's weird human captive bitch slave. Yes. Yeah, I get. I, that's how I would describe it. This stretch. movie's a fucking nightmare. Olaf is weird and like kind of attracted to the trolls, and it's a whole I thing. Thought Ol- I thought Fen wanted to fuck Aiden. Like, how does that even work? Because yeah. Fen is like, look, Emily. What? Look, when a troll loves a human. And one of them's three inches tall, and one of them is a child. It's just illegal. Should I at the McElroy brothers? They know a lot about Vor. Emily, what? it's illegal. Yeah. Let's not. Let's. Also, the background in one of these scenes had JPEG artifacts on it. I was trying to find that. Uh, they're walk. Fen and Hayden are wa- or no, Fen and Jarvik are walking out of something, mm-hmm. and it's during this sequence. And the background, like they're zoomed in on Fen really hard, and so the background has artifacted during the zooming. Okay, and then it zooms out. That happens at the very end too. <laughs> I'm glad that you knew exactly what I was talking about. Um, this is one of the weirdest movies I've ever fucking seen, and I actually felt shame that it existed. In addition to that note, I was less than half an hour in. Holy shit, I did not do a good job with this plot summary. Yeah, no, the whole thing is bad. Everything is terrible. <laughs> well, to be fair to you, there's nothing that fucking happens in this movie that is of any consequence, so writing a plot summary... There's, like, nothing to go off of. There's, like, no big moments. (laughs) No, the next hour, nothing happens until the very end. I thought about skipping ahead, and it was just like, no, I have to suffer for my art. And by art, I mean podcasts that maybe 20 people listen to max. Hey, listeners, we love you. Be sure to reach out to us if you want a I watched Trollland and all I got was this stupid crop top crop top. Oh, my God. I want one. Yes. At any rate, there's a CG deer that shows up and uh, Hayden pets it. It looks like it's an out of the box model. It's a like bad it's just out it's of the too box good. model. Yes, but it's better than everything else in the movie. Hayden's except hand, for the environment. Hayden's hand goes through the deer's eye when he pets it. Yes. Also, there was a casual Lord of the Rings reference up in there. Did you catch it? No. So, uh, Fen and Hayden, yeah, Hayden, are hiding from Olaf, and Olaf and his golf cart are on top of this ridge, and then underneath this, so there's a tree, and there's like a little, like a drop down, like an embankment, and it kind of cuts in a little bit in the environment. So Hayden and Fen are hiding under the roots of this tree while Olaf and his golf cart are above them and he's looking around. And it's the scene in Fellowship of the Ring where the ring wraith is on the road and Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin are under the tree roots hiding. Yes. Wow, yeah. You know, I thought that scene was out of place because it was too well done. (laughs) I didn't even think about that. It's because I know this Lord of the Rings references and absolutely fucking everything. Uh, I also called out a timestamp at 3357. Is Fen's vest just missing on him? 
probably. Like, I, I'm tempted to pull it up and screenshot it for you. Do it. Because, uh, okay, I will. go off for a sec. Talk about the ad breaks and the rest of this movie. Uh, the only other thing I have to note is that, aside from the notebook, every time a character hands another character something, there's nothing in their hands. So, no. Hayden talks about Toasty Pops, and he gives one to Fen, and Fen eats it. Like, you hear the handoff noise, you hear the crinkly wrapper noise, you hear Fen eating, but you never see an object. No, there is no object. This movie fucking was killing me while I was watching it. We've watched a lot of bad movies for this terrible. podcast. We've watched Izzy's Way terrible. Home, which I still think is very bad. But Izzy's Way Home felt more competent than Trollland. We've watched some really dark shit. And yet this burnt my soul in a way that nothing else has reached the depths of. Oh, on another note. I just want to point out that we are not doing uh, Saber Sparks content one for one on purpose. What? Uh, I very specifically, there's a popular YouTuber who does the same niche we do of bad animated movies. His name is Saber Spark. He used to be a My Little Pony YouTuber, I think. At any rate, dude does the same thing uh, where he watches a bad animated movie and talks about it, just not in podcast form. I just want to point out that like... Honestly, yes. He does good content, and I am aware of him, and I try to keep away from content that he's already done, mm. so we're not, like, flooding the market with the same movies. We just had to do Troll Land. It feels rude. Yeah. Yeah, Troll Land is really bad. I just, like, I wanted to shout out, like, there's somebody else who does this and is also good at it, and I'm aware of them. Yeah, we respect the hustle. So, you know. Oh, 100%. That's why, like, I don't think we should bite his content directly and wanted to acknowledge that dude did it first and it definitely showed up in my YouTube feed because he watched it. Yeah, I mean, only like four people have watched Trollland and we are two of them. And he is one of them. We. Okay. That only leaves one other sad human. Here's the screenshot. Okay. Um. And I'm gonna let's see. Forward, fast forward a little bit to see if I can find. Oh it. yes, his vest is distinctly missing. Okay, I thought so. What the fuck? Yeah, because like if you look at any <laughs> other point in this movie, Fen is wearing like a vest. Vest. Oh my god, I didn't realize how shiny and BDSM. Yeah, here it is. Oh Jesus, this is a great screenshot. You're just gonna really enjoy this. Can this be the cover for the episode? You bet it can. Uh, here it is. This is for you. Um, oh no! Yeah, so Fen's vest looks like what happened was um, the normals were just kind of reversed, maybe. So the shadow of his vest is there, but his actual vest is not on his body. There you go. That's the picture I want to be our uh, <laughs> cover for this. Oh, I get it. Wow. Yeah. What are these trolls wearing? What? Uh, also, why is he so shiny? Because he's underground. I don't know. Because the lighting isn't consistent at fucking all. I'm on my way. <laughs> all right. I just, what a fucking... So this movie's oh a disaster. Um, Fen a disaster. tries to find Hayden because he's just like, I need my best friend. Uh, and Olaf captures Jarvik's Friends. Jarvik's. Jarvik's. Oh, yeah, Jarvik's gang. Jarvik's gang. Uh, Klorn and the other one. The Camp Jamboree is happening. Hayden helps save the trolls from Olaf. And then Hayden returns to Fen's side after learning. Hold on. Hayden saves the trolls from Olaf. The trolls turn to. Fen's side slash team up with Hayden because they realize that Hayden is cool and that human values don't suck. They go to convince Jarvik to stop the prank because she's about to kill a whole bunch of fucking children. How cool would this movie be if it ended with a shitload of kids getting crushed? They make peace with Olaf, humans and trolls bond, and become friends. Our movie ends. That's it. That's the the trolls turn invisible, and they definitely just turn invisible because there's less to animate. I don't know if it was entirely because it was less to animate, because if you think about the superior movie DreamWorks Trolls, um, 
the trolls kind of blend in with their environments. So I think what they wanted to do was like blend the trolls in with their environment, but they didn't have the skill or the time or the money to do so. So they're invisible. Uh, I also love the stock white explosions that they used for Olaf's flower bombs, yeah. which are supposed to reveal the trolls. <sighs> It's just like a smoke bomb going off that they colored whiter. I saw one it's of those. It's so funny. I saw one of those the second you I read that note and I just prayed for the sweet embrace of death. <laughs> my note is just I'm losing my mind, Emily. They they talk about candied beetles. Now here's where I start calling out the bullshit here. They talk about candied beetles and one troll hands something to Jarvik and there's nothing in her hand. There's never an exchange of objects because you would have had to add those in post mocap. Yes. The grass texture is moving. The characters are just over top of it. Sometimes characters aren't even sitting on the ground plane. They're, this movie is just all over the place. <laughs> they all scoot out of like a white vulva looking thing at one point. Like all the trolls just ploop out of it. I don't know why, but it uh, it got me. I didn't see that at all. And I'm really glad that I didn't see that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I even made the note. I don't know where this is in the movie and I've stopped caring. I am so, so done. Just, just fuck me up, fam. Yeah, that, that uh, my favorite part of this movie... Huh. Yeah. Is me explaining motion you ex- capture? Yes, because I knew you'd know the answer. Uh, my favorite part of this movie is when non-focus characters continue to jitter just, like, slightly out of frame. Yeah, and it's because instead of animating crowds, they just decided... It would have looked better if they just put characters in in T-pose. Honestly. Because when you use mocap for stuff like that, especially shitty mocap... And I'm not saying the Kinect can't be used for decent motion capture, because I myself have worked with the Kinect... And gotten decent motion capture with it. But cleanup is like entirely necessary. Especially for a movie like this. And they just didn't do any cleanup. You go in. You make it better. It's an easy process. And if you don't. the It's the same reason like when Hayden is fighting for his notebook. His arms lock up. So his wrists are like. If I extend my arms straight from me. And then rotate my wrists. So that they're facing both facing outward. And then make claw hands. That is how his wrists lock. So he's trying to grip the notebook with his wrists facing backwards and like just smacking the back of his hands together because he's he's gimbal locked. Like he's totally locked up and they can't undo that because the character, when you cross shitty mocap over yourself, we call it occlusion. When you cross over yourself in motion capture and you don't account for it, you get stuck. The, the software does not understand that you've taken your right arm and are touching your left shoulder with it. It's just like, what the fuck happened to your arm? And it just kind of freaks out. This whole movie is dumb. It just needed a little bit. This movie would have been fine, I think, maybe, if they had done an ounce of cleanup. Like one person stayed yeah. late one day of the week and did a little fucking cleanup. I was too sober for this movie. Oh, 100%. And I was at work, so my coworkers were watching me watch this, and I needed it to be over. And then I decided that I was leaving after the movie was done. I don't know. Excuse me. I don't know who I was refer. Oh, Hayden. I think Hayden was running, and it looked terrible. And it was the saddest goddamn summer camp I had ever seen. And then there's... Jarvik sawing at the totem pole, but her knife is flat against it. So it's like if I took a knife and was just like, I'm going to stab the wall, but I was smacking the wall with the flat of the <laughs> knife. Yes. She's like, I yes, saw that down happened. the totem pole. And we're like, no, you're not, bitch. They couldn't, they couldn't have the knife clip into the totem pole. That would have made too much fucking sense. all of the things to clip through all of the other things, make it the goddamn (laughs) knife. (laughs) Of course they couldn't. That would have required thought. Nothing else required thought. (laughs) Can we talk about 
the 2D segments and how they're just as ugly as the 3D segments of the movie. And then some of them are just traced 3D frames that have already been on screen. Not unless we can also talk about how the characters, so that the, it ends on a zoom out with all the characters in the shot. The environment does not change scale. The characters are sliding as the camera moves to kind of like compensate for the camera move. And that's just not how a zoom works. And I was very, I didn't even watch through the credits. I immediately closed the credits and like left work. I did watch Sinbad though. Like before I watched uh, the land. Good call. This, the app that I watched the movie on tried to make me watch Fred 3. Fred goes to summer camp right after Troll Land. And I was like, that's an insult. I'm leaving. So honestly, when they brought up the Troll Land movie, the movies that were under it didn't seem that bad. Oh, yeah, like, uh... The Woodley. Who is it? The Rock. The Rock. I've got... The Rock plays Fred's dad. Oh, I've got Aqua Tales, Jungle Tales, Kung Fu Masters, Pondemonium 2, and Kung Fu Masters 2. Yeah, but like, look at the fucking I see what the the poster is. for Troll Land. It doesn't look that. It looks pretty good. I know. I feel that. Well, this one's 2D animated. Ooh, that looks bad. Here's a Garfield knockoff. Got two of them. You're a Garfield knockoff. I th- I'm going to hit play on this one. I am. Ah, I'm we're very done. Oh yeah, that was Troll Land. Wait, 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 wait. Are you ready for the best part about Troll Land? Yeah. The reviews. Oh boy. So here we go. One of the reviews for Troll Land literally just says, "I really hope the asylum will stop making animation films effective immediately." The other one is, "This is test footage, right? They're still working on it to release an actual completed version, right?" And then someone says, "I can't even explain what the hell that was." I didn't even like Trolls by DreamWorks, so I don't have anything to say about that. And then, if you scroll all the way down, you have a troll gets a kid to take mushrooms, which is fine. But then we also have... I think my favorite... Huh. My favorite review on this page is a review by someone who has an animation smear from The Simpsons as their icon, and the review is just, I don't. I don't. Um, I also don't. There's also Dove.org, which is that, like, Christian site. Yes, our friends at Dove.org. Troll Land. Whoa, how does this movie have a one for nudity? <laughs> I guess the guy rips his pants during yeah. it. I did not pay enough well, attention. Well, it's because he rips his pants, but they didn't model any of that happening, so you just get the ripping sound. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it says he rips his pants, but you don't see it. Okay, give me the Dove review. Uh, the Dove review, they got the All Ages Seal of Approval. Troll Land is a charming animated story which teaches that sometimes traditions are wrong and trust is vital to a friendship. The most important lesson in this tale is that family and friends take care of each other. We award it the Dove Family Approved Seal for all ages. Let's read some of the IMDb reviews because those were fucking great. I just want to read one of them. This movie... No, read as many as you want. I just... The fact that this is appropriate for all ages, it's appropriate for no one. No one who's alive. This movie didn't deserve to exist. No. I... This movie... uh, I could have lived my whole life having never seen this movie, and I would have been just as unhappy. But now I'm more (laughs) unhappy. Because I Yeah, I was gonna say, this is a net negative on my life. Yeah. That's why I think that you should buy our t-shirts in our merch store that currently exists. Mm -hmm. So, the first review is... 1 out of 10. Only if you hate yourself. Apparently, 99% of the movie's budget went to bribe the big-name talent into being involved in this abysmal waste of time. The computer animation, which looks like it was done on one weekend by a hacked Commodore 64, may have been acceptable in 1978, but it's inexcusably bad. 
The storyline is trite, tiresome, and predictable. Not that it matters because the visuals are so off-putting that it makes everything else moot. Even small children would have given this thing a pass unless they've never seen anything else. In fact, if you put your laptop with an animation program installed in front of a two-year-old, they would probably create something far superior. Not even severe medication would make this abomination tolerable. One out of ten. Worse than food fight. Oh, hmm. I guess. One out of ten. Like, yeah. We'll make one feel trolled. Yes. One out of ten. That w- Absolute trash. Yes. One out of ten. Awful. Just awful. Never allowing my kid to choose this movie again. Ha. <laughs> it looks like it was made in an hour by a seventh grader for their final animation project or it was made in 1985 on the most primitive of computers and software the poor parent whose kid chose this because like you can again if you just see the trail the um poster you're like yeah okay 10 out of 10 amazing this movie is the most amazing beautiful food we have good things and thank you but for this but opportunity sing hang out good by hop you enjoy the movie I'm going into this person's IMDB profile to see if they had a stroke while writing the review this is their only review okay 1 out of 10 is too high this movie deserves a 0 out of 10 10 out of 10 dank <laughs> By Big Willy. The movie has the best yes. animation I've seen in a while. The storyline is beautifully written and the voice acting is top notch. Can't wait for the sequel. Do you think they meant to review trolls? Like the actual... Big Willy also only has one review. Both Big Willy and the previous 10 star review reviewed this in February of 2019. Which makes me think that these aren't real reviews. No. Someone was trying to make trolls look less bad. Troll land. It's technically trolls with a Z. It's trolls with a Z, but the alternate title is troll land. Neither makes any sense. No, this, I don't no, this care. Nothing in this movie makes sense. It was terrible. Least favorite movie we've ever watched. Yeah, this is uh, bottom of the barrel. This beats uh, Izzy's, Izzy's Way Home. home yeah. isn't... Izzy's Way Home looks better yeah. because people worked on Izzy's Way Home. <laughs> this movie was like you strapped five Microsoft Connects together and said, make a movie. No, fuck You'll you. figure they it out. They budget for one Microsoft Connect. <laughs> if that. Okay, they strapped four iToys to a Connect Fucking and said, iToy. make a movie. And I tell you, is the PlayStation 2 version of a Kinect, oh, aka no. a shitty webcam. Oh, no. I loved it, but it was trash. That's definitely what this movie was made on. How dare we besmirch the Kinect this way? That's true. I'm sorry, Kinect. You were too good for this world, TBH. I actually really liked working with the Kinect. It was pretty simple to do, and you got a decent result. The Kinect also had very fun games on it. Uh, Seeing everyone else try and rip off the Wii and Microsoft was like, no, what if we actually improved on this and made it so you didn't have to hold a controller? And I was like, yeah, I can vibe with this. It's a little, it was a little inconvenient to set up, but the Kinect itself, good, good piece of tech that when the games worked with the technology, they were very fun. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we are well off topic here. Thank God this didn't have a video game or any information on it whatsoever, because I don't think I could have spent any more of my life dealing with Troll Land. I'm going to make up a budget. Uh, Their budget was uh, $3, and they made uh, $7 total worldwide, worldwide gross today. That sounds right to me. Stop the feeling. I'm gonna watch much, okay, when this gets when this gets put on streaming services like uh, Tubi, which is where I watched it, uh, does no. someone at Tubi pay for this, or do they just steal oh, it no. and put it on no Tubi time. and go? No one will notice. What? I wonder 
who pays for this movie to be on streaming services like Tubi, where I watched it? Does someone go and buy all the Asylum's films just to fill out Tubi's roster, or do they just steal them and know that no one at the Asylum will notice? I could ask. Who could you ask? Glenn. What does Glenn do? Well, according to this movie, he was the screenwriter. He's also their visual effects lead soup person. Do do you know Glenn? I do know Glenn. Wait, is Glenn like an actual friend? Uh, He is a professional acquaintance. Yo, why is Glenn not on this podcast right now telling us about Troll Land? Because Glenn is a real adult and I don't think I could get him to talk about Troll Land. I have all of the questions for Glenn. I really feel, okay, hear, hear me out, hear me out here. What if I try and get a job making an Asylum animated movie and I go like deep undercover? I genuinely think you could make an Asylum animated movie in your spare time. That's Like fair. as a side game. It would look too good though. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you could totally take the job and be like, I need to work remotely because I, uh, my dog, and then just do the movie at home. That's fair. I'll just be like, guys, give me all the money. See, this is why we need a Patreon page so that everybody can donate so that I can dedicate my life to working on Izzy's Way Home to Izzy Found It, Found Home. It looks like they have not made an animated movie in a while. No, are you I'm really? looking at their I'm looking at their current film lineup right now. Most of it is uh blank headed shark attacks. They're currently on to six headed shark attack. Hey. Which is uh fuck you. the sixth in the series, I, I would assume, movies. or possibly the fifth. So is six headed shark attack the fifth or the sixth movie? I'd assume it's the fifth because you can't just start with one headed shark attack. That's I stupid. I feel like it started with three headed shark attack. That makes sense. Oh, then that's only a shark attack three. Oh shit, they're making another Zombies. I fucking love that movie. What? Zombies is a movie about zombie zoo animals. It's amazing. Oh Jesus Lord. Yeah, so Have you not seen Zoombies? apparently 2019, we're getting Black Summer, Zombies 2, Monster Island, Pet Graveyard, uh, and Adventures of Aladdin. <laughs> oh no, Glenn. Did Glenn work on Adventures of Aladdin? No, if you scroll up, he's listed as the director for the Adventures of Aladdin. Oh, Glenn. What else did Glenn, Glenn direct honey. here? He's usually just their like, VFX lead person. Here's Troll Land. Oh, God. Sinister Squad. Jurassic School. Ice Sharks was actually okay. Yeah. yeah. I really liked Ice Sharks. Geo Disaster. <laughs> At any rate. What? We've full, filled up our time, which is impressive and also sad. Yeah, we somehow made it. So... Before you go, I would like you to know about our most important sponsor, that being snacks. <laughs> Just Do you like snacks. snacks? I like snacks. We should all get some snacks. Snacks sponsor this podcast You're right now because I'm, I'm thinking about having a snack. You are a snack, dear listener. I'm going to have you thick, you... peanut butter pretzels with my dog. I thought you were going to have bubble tea. I also have bubble tea, but if I have peanut butter pretzels, I can share them with my dog. Aw, I want that. Do you want to share peanut butter pretzels? Yeah, this podcast... Yes. This podcast is brought to you by Kirkland Brand Peanut Butter Pretzels. Fucking Costco, come at me. Hell yeah. Costco, sponsor us. (laughs) Our wholesale podcast. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's great. You get four podcasts for the price of three. But it's also giant, and it fits in your car, and then you never have to buy another podcast for as long as you live. Yes. This has been Animated Opinions uh, episode, what is this, like 30-something out of hundreds upon hundreds that you bought at Costco in your podcast mega pack? I hope you're enjoying it, because you're going to have to finish all of these since you paid for them. I'm Melanie. Emily. Bye. Uh- <laughs>